I'm oh you. <gasps> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> what is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sunrise channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are playing a 1v1 match on a beautiful map, Forts of Eisen, in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.2 in a random mirror. And this time we will get actually to play the Gondor faction, okay? I take it every day of the week. Where was Gondor when the Westfall fell? It's my most favorite faction. And hopefully it's going to be a great matchup too. Open with a blacksmith and a farm and always recruit Pippin. That's very important. Let's wall check. Oh, it's a good faction. Okay. I mean, I'm not really into that. Hopefully it's going to be Rohan because I don't like to play Gondor mirror matches. They are extremely boring for me and I just don't enjoy them. I mean, I personally enjoy good against evil matchups the most. So when you play against good faction with Gondor and you don't open with a barracks in your castle, you need to play a bit more defensively. Because you have only two soldiers, and when you are against Rohan, he can outspam you big time. So playing defensively and scaling into the mid to lead game is what we are looking for. Okay, so we can use the Hobbit to check what is coming from the middle to determine the faction. Because even though we can tell if it's a good or evil faction, we cannot, spe we cannot specifically tell which faction it is. Okay, let's capture everything. Alright, beautiful. Oh, it's a Meriadog Brainy Ball. Okay. Okay. So we're against Rohan. Looks like Rohan wants to take the revenge for the best fold. I mean, the plan is to actually see where the peasants are going to come from. I see only the Hobbit in the middle of the map, so I don't see the peasants. Oh, now, now I see them. And what we can try to do is we can try to kind of put pressure on them with the Hobbit. Again, I'm not on host, so when you are off host player, it's like a huge disadvantage actually in the game. Because your units are not going to listen that to your calls properly. Look, I'm moving, dude. He doesn't want to listen. You full of a tuck. Come on, look. I'm trying to, man. I'm trying to. Okay, okay, okay. No panicking, no panicking, no panicking. I'm just making sure that they are... Oh, he's actually coming from the bottom side too. Okay. Three peasants. Three peasants. Against one soldier. But remember, the soldiers are strong in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and in addition to that, they have also the heal from the spellbook, which Rohan doesn't. Rohan has to go for the draft. Actually, this guy is pressuring us so incredibly a lot, man. Oh, that's gonna be rough, dudes. Okay. I mean, he's kinda slow, though. We were able to get a lot of stuff done in the castle, too. I think he was going for the delete push, which is not working that nicely in a patch 2.22, because everything is faster. Turn and fight them. We're gonna use heal and recruit one Gondor knight. And quick question to you guys in the comment section down below. What is your favorite matchup? When you play DFME 1 or when you was playing DFME 1 back in the day? Oh my goodness, my hobbit. Shang, shut up and focus on your gameplay, dude. I mean, still, you know, I'm curious. When you was playing the game back in the day in multiplayer eventually, what was the go-to matchup for you? Which you know, which matchup did you enjoy the most? I personally like to play Gondor against Isengard or Rohan against Isengard. These are my two most favorite matchups. Um, against Go against Mordor I don't like to play because it's kinda lame. When Mordor gets a Nazgul on the field, it's very hard for the for the good factions with the cavalry to play. Because Nazgul can shut down your Gondor Knights and also your Rohirrim. Oh my goodness. But you see the delete peasant rush is not going to be effective anymore. Because our Gondor Knights are just in time. And in, in addition to that we will also be... I mean we will be also able to save the soldiers. That's pretty good actually. Okay. So get now this one to the bottom to creep. We can also cloak the Hobbit right on the spot. So just in case he might try to creep this Walkley offensively. You can see. And if you don't know the Hobbit actually deals a great amount of damage to the Rohirrim too. Alright, again it's about vision control, with the evil factions it's much much, oh my goodness man, the one peasant. Dude, I cannot kill the one peasant man, come on now, please, I'm losing my mind. Ugh. Sorry guys, it's, it's, it's there. finally man, I need to send him now all the way back, okay, we have now the third gunner right on the field, let's creep, but uh, that was kind of rough dude, oh my goodness man, okay, it's okay though, I mean, in this matchup, when you play Gondor against Rohan or the other way around, you want to at least have the same amount of Gondor Knights on the field as your ally or your opponent in this case, 
as Rohirrim. If you if he outnumbers you, if he has for example three Rohirrim and you have only two Gondonites, you will lose map control. And remember what I say about map control. Map control is everything in this game. It's very important. Right, this Hobbit is actually getting on my nerves. But I believe what what is Rohan player doing? Is he actually going for heroes? I don't see any Rohirrim on the field. Normally against Rohan, you shouldn't be able to creep that much. Because remember, Rohan is a cheaper stable and also cheaper Rohirrim. Rohirrim are cheaper in compared to Gondonites. Okay, I mean, oh, never mind. He was creeping the top side. Okay, so we are able to creep the bottom side. Oh, he was also creeping this one. So three creeps for him. And oh, oh but I got the money. Yeah, yeah, boy. Okay, my heal is on cooldown. I got a bail. All right. I got the money, dude. Oh, they call me the pirate, <laughs> the treasure hunter. Talking about treasure, more treasure at the bottom side. Our money is looking so good, man. I mean, I would like to rush um, Ganov, but I can't. So basically, if I would do that, I would lose map control against Rohirrim. So upgrades are the way to go. We have also two power points in the bank, which means later on, when we get to recruit Ganov, we can also turn him into the Ganov to bite. And Steve is improving quite fast though. That becomes kind of scary. I can also use heal. I'm gonna wait for the heal cooldown. And then now I can go back again. Because my heal is available. And try to beat him into a fight. Remember Rohan can easily recruit Theodin. Which will make them stronger. So basically Theodin is better than heavy armor. And better than forge blades. But not better than you have forge blades and heavy armor at the same time. And now in the patch 2.2, Eoma is much more essential. So basically leveling up Eoma now is going to be way more easier because every spear throw you use will 100% kill one of the Golden Knights or Rohirrim or Vorks. So it deals now critical damage to the Cavalier units. It means leveling up Eoma to le from level 1 to level 4, which is important to get the leadership unlocked, is now way easier in compared to 1.06. The idea behind this move is to actually force the people to recruit him, you know? Because Theoden is so easy to be recruited, he offers leadership with level 1, and everybody can do that. But Elma is a bit tricky, so you need to run around the map a little bit, you know, with the spear throw, you need to try to get as many kills as you potentially can to get him to level 4. I mean, okay, I, I don't want to lose this actually. My Hobbit is very, very strong. As you can see, the level 3 farm is also quite tanky. And that's the benefit. If you don't lose any settlements at the beginning of the game against Rohan, it becomes heavily in your favor. So Rohan should be trying his best either to creep at the beginning of the game to get additional money. Oh my goodness. Are, there's his Legolas. Oh, okay. So yeah, the Prince of the Mirkwood Elves is here. But my Gandalf is going to be there very soon, my friend. So it's going to be a different story. Trust me on that one. So what we need to do now is avoid uh, avoid giving levels to Legolas. It's very important because the more levels he has, the more damage he will be able to deal towards our Gandalf. And we don't want that to happen. So level 7, Legolas can actually almost one-shot Gandalf. I'm pretty certain we should be able to win this fight. My Hobbit is actually popping off edge. <laughs> you know, very green. So you full of a tuck. Oh, never mind, abort mission. I was actually do expecting to dominate this fight, but I can't. Theodin OP. I mean, Theodin is alongside with Lourdes. The, I mean, there are two very cost-efficient heroes in this game. One of them is Lourdes, who is definitely the most cost-efficient hero in the game because he has Cripple, Pillage, Carnage, and also Leadership. Everything in one hero combined. And the second most cost-efficient hero in the game is Theodin King. So, with 1200 resources only, you get 30% damage and 50% armor. Which is kind of nuts, you know? It's like a walking war chant. And all of that for only 1200 resources. That's quite OP. <laughs> okay, when he use Hawk Strike, we need to change formation. You see? Oh, he still killed two of us. I mean, without the shields, we cannot really deal with him. And I don't want to go for the shields, I want to go for Gandalf. Almost there. Almost there. We are losing map control, though, that's bad. I like Legolas, though. Very, very good hero. Fun hero. Especially when you get some levels on him. He can level up. You know, he has Hulk Strike. A great DPS. Super attack speed. 
But can he deal with the White Wizard? That's the question. Yes, Pippin would like to say, but we have the White Wizard. That has to count for something. I mean, again, I'm trying to avoid this Legolas, but it's hard to do that. Because he can just, you know, focus on, on his Legolas. I need to focus on three different battalions of Gondonites. And we get the shields. I think he should be going for Elma instead of Theodin or both at the same time. Again, later on, it's going to be very important to have Elma on your side. So when it comes to deal with Gandalf when you play Rohan, it's about burst. So you don't want, you know, when you can only hurt him, but you can never burst him. He can always go ahead, use the, bub use the blast and then get away whenever he wants to. But when you have enough damage outputs with Aragorn leadership or also Elma leadership, very important, then you can't even approach the army anymore with your Gandalf. I mean, imagine the situation, you know, you have Rohirrim Archer with Elma leadership, Aragorn leadership, and Tyrion leadership. That's in total, like, 150% more damage. In, in addition to that, you have also Legolas dealing constant damage. So your Gandalf, even with heal, can't approach them. Oh, smart, smart. Smart movement, he was dodging my lightning sword. Okay. I mean, I like those kind of games the most, dude. You know, like he knows what's up, you know what I mean, he knows what to do, he's expert player, it's so fun, it's so fun to play this. Okay, it's going to be the time for the marketplace now. Very important upgrade, the longer the game goes on, the more valuable it's going to be. It will, it will pretty much make us rich, eventually, right? So it's pretty good. I mean, I want to go for a Wizard Blast, if I can. Oh my goodness, can I kill this Legolas? Hit him one couple of times with the Gondor Knights and then Easter him. Will this be enough? We chunked him a little bit. There is no way he survived with 1 HP! Blast him. Gandalf, do it, do it, do it! Boom! I'm a servant of the secret fire. The wielder of the flame of Arnor. Dark fire will not avail you, King Theodin of Rohan. Okay, I mean, he was so lucky though that, you know, Legolas was able to survive with 1 HP. You cannot calculate that. You cannot calculate that. He healed, but it would be a little bit too late. He healed after my lightning or Easter light hit him, but he was so lucky that he was able to survive with like 1 HP left, you know? But map control is looking good for us. We have also almost all the upgrades from the marketplace purchased. And then we can also, uh, we need to make some combos. I mean, ideally we want to make tower guards, because that's the problem with the gun affection when you play against Rohan. When you want to go for the trebuchet for the siege and you don't have any defense for them, like tower guards backing them up, what Rohan can do is to just go to your trebuchet with the Rohirrim and kill them over and over again. Remember the patch 2.22? Killing trebuchet, killing siege weapons generally, is much more rewarding. So the, the, the unit or hero which kills them will actually level up way faster. In addition to that, also the player will be able to collect way more power points than in the patch 1.06. So losing Trebuchet is like a lose-lose situation because they cost a lot of money and they also feed a lot of experience and a lot of power points. I mean, he can't really face against my Gandalf. Again, um, the problem is Eoma. Eoma is missing. Very important hero. I want to snipe down this Theoden, actually. I want to e-study him and also warning arrow him. He has heal on cooldown. Remember, he was using heal a few seconds ago. Again, uh, for Legolas. So if I can warning arrow and easter light him, he should be dead. Boom! Come on, Gandalf! Oh my goodness, man. Gandalf is a sloppy. The, your old man. Old wizard. Mifrandia. I mean, Gandalf has so, such a bad ass name, dude. Like, imagine you named your son Mifrandia. He's the white rider. Like, he has so many names, dude. It's unbelievable. And every one of them is actually great. Beside the one we, he got from, uh, see it, from Warm Tonk. I want, I want to blast him so badly. Can I do it, guys? Can I do it? Oh! I'm, oh! The Bobo Combo! Look at this! He got knocked out! Sit down, Horse Lord! You might be the Horse Lord of Rohan, but I'm a Horse Lord of Shadowfax! Dude, that's so lucky, because it's situational. They don't get knocked down on the ground every single time. You know, it's like 50-50 chains, and we got lucky there, you know? Sometimes you also need luck. 90% skill, 10% luck. 
Okay, we have also fire rose. We can also sell all of these units. I mean, I will combine the two soldiers. We say from the battalion, from from the starting units. I want to go him so bad. I have healed, so I can play a little bit risky. Do it, Gandalf. Take the. Okay, that was not the best with a plus in the game. I don't need to use heal. I think. Did you use hawk strike already? <laughs> Cal calculate it. Guys, hey, guys, did you doubt me? Do you think I didn't calculate this? Of course I didn't. Of course I didn't. But sometimes you gotta take the risk, you know? No risk, no reward. And now I have saved my Gandalf and I have still heal available. So it means I can go one more for one more okay, risky play. It's the plan. I mean, you see how much money we got? We have look at the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen. And also the marketplace is making bank for us. Literal bank. Okay, so we have the Ranger Summon available from the Spellbook too. Uh, the idea is to get to the Eagles later on. Maybe Cloud Plague is going to be better when I think about it, but um, gen you know, generally speaking, Eagles can be used to actually kill heroes quite fast. If you don't know the Eagles countering, hard countering heroes, including heroes like Aragorn and even Gandalf. They can kill Gandalf in like two hits, you know. They're like, um, they're like the best, one of the best counters to heroes. The best counter to heroes, of course, is the Balrog and the Mumu kills. The Mumu kills, they one-shot you. A Mumu kill actually deals more damage to some heroes than Aldro can. So basically, charge attack any hero, including Aragorn or Gimli, they get insta-killed. Insta-killed. But Eagles are also able to chunk, especially those weak armored heroes like Gandalf. They cannot really do much against the Eagles because the Eagle can always catch up to you as well. You cannot run away from them. Okay, it's going to be time now for us to actually shine. Um, the plan is to capture now the outpost at the bottom left side, boys. And then we will be start sieging, you know? Because I wanted to get some out uh, combos to this location. So what we can do is we can build a well, a statue, like an outpost pretty much. And then start sieging from this location. Oh, he saw my rangers, man. The problem is his Theoden is very close to Glorious Charge. And I didn't want this to happen. But I just fed him unwillingly my rangers for no reason. I mean, he can't really compete with the map control because my Gandalf is going to be the counter to everything that he has, um, you know, on the field. He cannot send out Legolas solo as well. Remember, the Lightning Sword or Easter Light in this case is able to chunk him big time, almost one shots him. I mean, Easter Light. A couple of people are complaining about how strong this ability is, but you got to keep in mind, keep in mind that you need to be white and you need to invest six thousand for this hero, and that's all Gondor has really in his pocket, you know. There is no. Other ability that, <clears throat> that counters hero that much. Okay, I mean, oh, what? Hey, my Gandalf, he just stopped moving for whatever reason. But it's fine, it's fine. Okay, map control is amazing. Never, never, ever, guys. Um, stop focusing on map control. Whenever you play this game and you take a look into the minimap. And you see it's not more than 50 percent in your color remember i will be there whispering in your ear saying map control is everything map control is everything i want to kill this theory so badly oh lightning sorting nice maybe it's a little bit too risky what i'm doing here but i'm gonna do it anyway you know what i mean i feel from the spell for the worst case scenario i feel i have i can heal heal <gasps> My heal missed! I missed the heal! Did you guys... I mean, you guys are my proof. I healed, but my healing came like two seconds later. And my Gandalf almost died for that. I would be so incredibly upset if my Gandalf would have been dead there, man. Unbelievable, dude. This, you, can't let, you can't be serious with that. Holy guacamole. I mean, I'm so used to play on host, and I just forgot about the... I mean, it's my bad. So basically, when you play off host, you need to kind of calculate the delay. So you need to kind of do stuff like one or two seconds before you want to do it. <laughs> before you need to do it. Because there's a chance... I mean, the thing is, Steve is from Argentina. I'm from Germany. So basically, the distance is quite far away. And he's being the on host player, so it means my internet is trying to connect to his PC in Argentina. Which is, you know, not not like a neighbor country, you know, it's like pretty, pretty big distance between these two countries. And then it's, it's it lags. It's a little bit laggy. It's a game from 2004 with no company behind it, okay? I cannot complain. 
It's still the best game in the world, though. I don't care, you know? I don't care. Okay, now we can get the Tower Guards recruited. The best defenders of the White City. And spam more units. And again, we want to make sure to have some protection for the, tre for the trebuchet. Otherwise, they will just come with the Rohirrim and kill our trebuchet over and over again. Double Tower and also Ranger inside. Remember the statue behind uh, the outpost? Oh my. Hold on. I don't want to lose my Gondonets. I mean, he has a big army now, by the way. He has also Elma. I don't know about Elma, though. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And no, do not dare to leave a time stamp in the comment section down below to address this non-beautiful and non-epic wizard blast we have just seen. Do not do that to me, okay? Because I want to forget about it. I want to pretend like it never happened. Okay, we are good to go. We are good to go. I think we are strong enough now to actually force a fight. Um, the problem is people, they seem to find themselves in a situation to rush the fight way too early, which actually can backfire. Because if you lose the fight, remember, imagine, like, imagine for a single second, we go now for a fight. We have so many units on the field, but we are not certain that we will dominate the fight. And he ends up killing every one of us. Like he ends up killing Farami, Gandalf, Boromir, and all the combos plus Trebuchet. Do you understand how much power, how many power points you will be able to collect from this one fight? You will have more than enough to get to the end summon. Oh my, what is he doing? Is he out of his mind? Oh, that's too risky, man. I mean, the problem is we have no leadership. It's like Gandalf, so we need... Oh! Okay, we want to kill Elma. So kill Elma with the warning arrow too. Boom, 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 combo, ladies and gentlemen. I can, I can heal. I think it's a horrible fight for him to take. Okay, heal. It's a horrible fight for him to take. He was trying to kill my Gandalf, but without Elma leadership, it's not that easy. He has also no Aragorn. He has only the leadership from Theodin. In Glorious Charge, doesn't give you a lot of leadership. It gives you much more armor and uh, slow resistance. So it's not about damage leadership when you use the Glorious Charge. It's way more about the resistances you get. But do you guys like the combo? Do you guys like the combo? The focus is very important. So again, in BFM1, quality over quantity. So the units, they only matter if they have enough leadership. That means your primary target are always going to be the heroes, especially the heroes you can kill quickly. So there are exceptions to the rule. The two exceptions to the rule are <laughs> Aragorn with the Blade Mask and Nuri combination in Gimli. These two heroes, they can be a waste of time. You can still kill them, but it will just take you too much time. In, in, in this time, your opponent might be able to deal way more damage in return. But when it comes to deal with heroes like Gandalf, or Elma, Theodin, and Legolas, you can kill them quite fast. You know, they are kind of, they, they deal a lot of damage, but they are also very squishy. Okay. A knock knock Gondor, who is there? A knock knock Rohan, who is there? Where was Gondor when Vessel fell? I was here on Force of Ice to defeat you, to destroy you. Okay, and there are some people who are asking, why is Aragorn not in Gondor? <laughs> Can you guys imagine having Aragorn in Gandalf in Battle for Middle of One in one faction? Uh-oh, <laughs> good luck dealing with this, dude. All right, you want to commit? I want to break at least one more part of the wall, and then we can fight this. All right, for death and glory. Oh, he's going ham. I can cover the land. I don't want to use the land myself first. I have lots of tower guards. Oh, he's chunking my Gandalf! What is damaging him? Shield bubble, shield bubble, shield bubble. Run, 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 run. Oh my Legolas, I told you guys. I didn't focus for a few seconds. I didn't think that he will commit this way. Okay. I can summon the rangers too. Boromir is almost level 4. But Faramir has leadership unlocked. I want to kill this Theodin so badly. Focus him down, focus him down. Oh, Theodin. Nice. We also got damage leadership from Boromir. That's huge. I mean... We still lost actually a lot. So what we can do now is we can just... I mean, that's the importance of the outpost, okay? I want to go for a Cloud Break, actually. Even though I could summon the Eagles and kill Aragorn, but I think Cloud Break is going to be better in an all-out fight. Because later on, when he has a couple of Rohirrim Archers with Theorin leadership, my Eagles, they cannot even play the game. They will get literally one-shotted. While Cloud Break gives me this slow potential, so I can slow them down a little bit by 30% actually, which is really significant. And 
In addition to that also, I reduce their armor by 30%, so I make them weaker in terms of speed and armor. And now two parts of the wall have been broken, so I can try to finish it off. Ideally, I want to wait for Gandalf to come back until his task is done, because his task is not done yet. And I'm with Gandalf, the White Rider, and the Gondor Knights, and Faramir, who has definitely shown his quality, and Boromir, both of them are level 5, that's huge by the way, they have Horn of Gondor available from Boro. And with one more level, we get also the Pillage, so Boromir is actually a very important hero nowadays, in the patch 2.22 for the Gondor faction, he was kind of like a meme hero, nobody was ever recruiting him in the 1.06 version of the game, because he was way too slow, his leadership was the only good thing about him, Horn would be completely useless, because with only banner upgrade, you could nullify the effect. But remember, the fear effects in the patch 2.22 now are working until the enemy units have, have either the fear resistant from the heroes, or they need to be at bare minimum level 3. And, you know, there are there is uh, high potential. I mean, it's about dealing damage and force him to retreat, you know? It's about dealing damage and then we can bail. And he, we want to make him poor enough so he cannot repair the walls anytime soon. Remember, each part of the wall, you need to invest... Don't tell me. I don't want to lose level 5. Is he going to try to kill it? Oh, okay, I need to heal him. No, 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 you're not killing him. You see, he killed the, he killed the unit, but we were able to save the battalion. That's very important. The heal from the spare book doesn't only heal up all the units almost back to full HP but also replaces one dead unit per battalion. Okay, Gandalf is back in the business, and now it's time. With full command points, full population, we cannot be any stronger with lots of tower guards, and hopefully it's going to be enough to take down the Rohan faction in Stevie's head. <laughs> in the video game, in the video game, in the video game. Okay, I'm gonna actually... I like, you know, I'm a person, I like to have like a plan B, you know, the plan B means if everything else fails, oh, I was just hitting my microphone again, it's too close to my mouth, I'm not used to this dynamic uh, microphones, but hopefully the sound quality of the microphone is good, guys, please let me know in the comment section down below, is the sound quality of the microphone okay, is it too loud, is it too quiet, is it too harsh, I don't know, you just let me know, you see the units got stunned even when they're level 2, but because of glorious charge, they don't die, However, now he now he has no Glorious Charge anymore. Glorious Charge is like 2-3 minutes cooldown. That means we can punish him. And it's very important to play around the cooldowns of your opponent. You know he has just used the heal. Then you know for the next 2 minutes, 3 minutes, he will have no heal. That's the time when you want to force fight. You know Glorious Charge is on cooldown, you want to force a fight. You, you know that Balrog is on cooldown, you want to... You know, you know what I mean. Tower Guard standing by. Alright. So, we, we blocked the entire area. Aragorn is coming. We can... He study him, warning arrow him. Again, the Wombo combo is very important. He study. You see how tanky he is, boys. You see how tanky he is, boys. Now break. I'm gonna also lightning sword him. And then Aragorn is so weak in the fetch 2.22. Aragorn is so weak in the fetch. Shut up. This guy is fully tanking a ranger army with Faramir Boromi leadership, Gandalf. Fully isolated lightning sword, Easter light, warning arrow, and he's back to full HP with Atelas in heal. Are you kidding me? And Boromir was able to knock him down on the ground all the time as well. Like, which hero can do that? Which hero can do that? I mean, without Blade Master, he's way, way more vulnerable, I, but I was not in a situation in which I had the chance to kite him, you know? <laughs> Look, my Gandalf on, <laughs> on foot. <laughs> Oh, GG well played, my friends. GG well played, Stevie. Um, look at the minimap. That's the most beautiful minimap I've ever seen. It's colored red. The color of Gondor. I mean, not really, because Gondor is the white color, but still. You want to fight Aragorn? You want to fight this? Look, Aragorn is still fighting against, like, a bajillion army. But he has no blade mask anymore. Do it. Oh, Farami has your his quality in this one. Nice. Oh, there is, there is this dude. I want to kill him so badly. I want to kill him so badly. Oh, he's running. <laughs> he's running. Don't run away from me. Come here, elf. Oh, he's going to stop. Take this. Oh, he's killing my Gandalf. He's killing my Gandalf. Oh, no, my Gandalf was able to survive. Steve has been defeated. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, you know, take care of yourselves. Keep 
hitting like a truck and is always stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys. Look at that. 87 against 45. Elon Musk style. Peace out.